it is now time for the main event of the evening. A professional 178 pound title bout. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the Dynamic Mortgage Concepts Red Corner. Please make welcome Anthony Sugarfoot Adam. You heard our ring announcer, Sean Patrick, tell us this is the 178 pound professional title fight. Here in the professional division, it's going to be three five minute rounds. As a professional, you can strike with the point of the elbow, which in elimination or amateur fights, you cannot, you have to strike with the forearm. And also, while you're standing, you are allowed to knee to the head of your opponent. Again, as an elimination fighter, you can't knee to the head at any time. So, five minute rounds, point of the elbow is a weapon, knee him in the face while they're standing. Yeah, and JR, the new 178 pound championship, the super middleweight championship, and Anthony Sugarfoot Davis, or Sugarfoot Adams, I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, and uh, living up to that nickname, he has sweet feet fighting for Team Wildman, and he does. He embodies what their type of fighter is. He's very dynamic on the feet, can throw any type of strike, any kick from anywhere. This guy is just lightning in a bottle. We see him so often doing such spectacular things, standing, spinning elbow knockouts, head kicks, outmaneuvering his opponents. But occasionally, we get to see his spectacular takedown game as well. Not only hard to put on the ground, but when he wants it on the ground, he's able to do so in emphatic fashion. Yeah, I think we're in for a real treat tonight. This fight is going to be fire. Anthony Adams, it's been a little while since he's been in the cage, and I think he's got something to prove tonight. Well, it's hard for him to get fights. For a while, he was getting a lot of fights, and he was just kind of destroying people. So then he started having a hard time finding fights against Colorado fighters. Pretty much he kind of ran that well dry eventually, and now he's getting to be so well known and so feared that it doesn't matter where they're coming from. You start to research this guy a little bit. Nobody wants to fight him. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. He wants to make a road trip just to get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is, Anthony Sugarfoot Adams walking into the cage. Clearly a fan favorite for obvious reasons. One of the most dynamic fighters. Please make welcome. Tilek Meshrapa. And let us know what the background is on our other main event fighter here, Mr. Mashrapov. Well, Mr. Mashrapov coming a long way. As you just said, hard to find fights for Adams. He's coming all the way from Miami, Florida. But Mashrapov has had fights not only all over the country, but all over the world. He's fought overseas. And he's coming in to make a statement. This is going to be a statement fight for him. If he can get a win over a guy like Anthony Sugarfoot Adams, it's going to propel him to the next level. A wealth of experience from Ashrapov and that world traveling, that going all over the country, all over the world, that's something that really helps a fighter in their mental game. You go to places where they don't have the food that you're used to, it's difficult to do the weight cutting, you might not have the sauna like you want, the climate is different, all these different things that you have to adapt to, you pretty much just become used to it and it becomes part of the fight game and it gives you such a mental edge because you're like, yeah, I've been there, done that, doesn't really matter. As we're checking out the tail of the tape, Mr. Adams, a bit of a height advantage and Mr. Mashrapov as a professional, a uh, bit of an experience advantage, I believe that, um, Uh, Pop's official record under sanctioned events is eight and one. I believe he has a wealth of experience and significantly more fights under unsanctioned events, having fought outside the country, etc. Yeah, Colorado is a little different in that, where they don't recognize some of those fights from other countries and stuff like that. So, doesn't necessarily reflect the true record of Pop, but this fight is going to be electric, and it. 
never fails to entertain when Sugarfoot comes into the ring. He's so loose, just waiting for his opponent. So for those that aren't familiar with it, Sambo, a Russian martial art, and basically mixed martial arts, there's a heavy influence on takedowns, there's a great deal of influence on submissions, but they do start all Sambo matches on the feet with striking. The wow. main event of the evening is presented by the newly built Wingate by Wyndham Loveland Johnstown Hotel, offering the contemporary guest rooms and suites, helpful and genuine hospitality, mountain views, and modern amenities. It's now time for the main event of the evening live from the Budweiser Event Center in Loveland, Colorado. A professional 178-pound title bout. Let's meet the fighters. First, fighting out of the Dynamic Mortgage Concepts red corner, holding a professional MMA record of five wins and zero losses from Team Wildman in Denver, Colorado. The reigning defending Sparta Combat League 170-pound champion, Please make welcome Anthony Sugarfoot Adams. And now, fighting out of the Blue Core Shooting Center, Blue Corner, holding an MMA record of eight wins and one loss from Hard Knocks 365, Miami, Florida, by way of Kyrgyzstan. Please make welcome Tilek. Mashrapa! This professional 178 pound title bout is scheduled for three five minute rounds. Referee Tom Johnson. All right, gentlemen, it's the main event of the evening. I want a clean, fair fight. Miss me at all times and protect yourself at all times. Let's touch gloves. Let's get after it. Mashrapov in the red facing off against Adams in the black and flag style trunks. Mashrapov coming to us from Miami, Florida, and Mr. Adams representing Team Wildman. Sambo versus Funky Dope. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever actually seen that style. Uh, <laughs> Where do you go to school for that? Having uh, Team Wildman. <laughs> <laughs> Having watched Mr. Adams' career from the very beginning, I can say I've had the privilege of watching Funky Dope quite a bit and uh, successful he has been. Both fighters nice and calm, feeling each other out, seasoned veterans. They're not gonna come out, they're not gonna swing wild right off the bat. Gonna just start to work the game plan. A beautiful switch kick to the body that lands for Mashrapov. Lots of power behind that kick. <laughs> nice overhand right. Following the jab, Mashrapov trying to set that overhand right up, almost landing. Beautiful inside leg kick by Sugarfoot. Time for a switch kick to the leg of his opponent of his own. And when you get to main events like this and guys that have so much experience, it really is just a chess match. This first round is going to be a lot of feeling out by each fighter, trying to figure out what the other one likes to throw, where they stand, which angles they cut, so that in round two, you can start to capitalize on what you've seen. And Adam's been here in the main event so many times. You saw him during the introductions, just leaning against the cage, arms up on the cage, super relaxed not letting anything bother his composure. Just sort of another day at the office. I've been here before, let's, uh, let's go out, touch gloves, and start to bang. And Mazhrapov has that style. You can see his hands are faced outwards, kind of like John Jones when he fights, just kind of flips his jab out there. He's not really looking to land it, judging distance, judging how Adams is gonna move. Just real relaxed on both fighters' parts. A beautiful hook. Almost landing by Mashrapov. Five minute round, so we're only about halfway through round number one here. And as that feeling out process that you talked about starts to fade, we'll start seeing these guys 
working to put a, a little more of a stamp on their techniques here. And it's not so much, hey, I'm trying to see where you're going. It's, hey, I think I know where you're going. Let's see if I can't beat you there. Yeah, beautiful one connected right there for Adams. And you can see both these guys' footwork is so phenomenal, too. They get in and out seamlessly. Makes it hard to counter when you have somebody that can throw those strikes and then get out of range. Shooting for the shot is Mashrapov. Beautiful defense by Adams, though, not allowing the takedown. And boy, did Mashapov do everything right on that takedown. Set it up with the strikes, went for the level change, drove all the way to the cage, got his hands clasped, and still not able to get the takedown, which just shows us how great Adams is at his takedown defense. And Adams, if you've been watching, has thrown three solid foot stomps, which is something that's totally legal, and it's very painful to the other fighter and what that does is it makes it painful to kick as well so those switch left kicks probably aren't going to come as often or as hard for Mashrapov if this keeps up and let's see if Adams elects to go for a takedown here he's putting his knee striking game into full effect here going into the legs and some into the body and not letting Mashrapov get his back off the cage and we'll see if Adams looks to take this to the mat Mashrapov does have that over under hook. He's still trying for that takedown, even from against the fence, which you don't see a lot. Not a lot of guys shoot for a takedown from their back being on the fence. Another hard stop to the foot by Adams. Those are painful. And again, that trying for that takedown there from pretty much any position that speaks to the Sambo background of Mashrapov. Heavy takedown game in the Sambo fighters. And Adams again putting that solid defense on display. Good knee up to the body by Adams. Very stabbing type technique for him there. Now Adams looking for the takedown. Tries to rip his opponent's hips off the cage. Oh, Mashrapov goes for the hip toss. Doesn't quite get it. Almost takes Adams down. What you can see, too, is both fighters have their heads straight up and down. They're digging them into each other's foreheads, not allowing their head to go down to the side, which is a lot of times what allows that takedown to happen. Back and forth on the takedown attempts throughout the latter third of round number one. Pretty even on the striking exchanges. Um, you know, like you had talked about, basically just kind of a feeling out process. And then once they clinched up after Mashapov had shot for the initial takedown, which we're seeing here on the replay, Adams able to control position majority of the time. Mashapov trying for a few takedowns, but Adams always wise to it. Yeah, and that was such a close round, JR. Both fighters, you know, feeling each other out. I do feel like Mashrapov landed a few more significant strikes, was a little bit more active on the feet when they were out in the octagon. But I don't know, that's going to be a coin flip round. And I see it as the other way. I see as Adams having controlled the position enough against the cage and working the consistent knee strikes and the foot stomps. Uh, so, split decision so far. <laughs> That's unforgivable. You can't disagree with me. <laughs> I do not think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> Here we go with round number two. Both fighters in the center of the octagon getting ready to go at it again. Adams, I can already see a little quicker in his footwork. Probably going to try to put a little bit more snap on his techniques there. And uh, basically let the feeling out process be finished. And what I discovered in round number one, I'm going to apply in round number two. And that's why these guys are pros, because they, they possess that kind of ability to think their way through a fight. Exactly. And you can see Adams mixing up the footwork now. You know that when his coach was in there, he was telling him exactly what he saw, where the weaknesses were, move his feet, get in, get out, take your angles, and then land those big shots that you're known for. You just see the look on the face of Mashrapov. He's just so nonplussed about everything. It's like, I've been here so many times. You're not going to throw anything that I haven't seen before. So Yeah, nothing's phasing him. Nice spinning kick. That was a nice try. He did land a beautiful check hook just a minute ago. Right when Adams threw his right hand, slipped back a little bit as soon as he came back in through the hook and it landed. But, yeah, like you said, nothing's phasing the guy. 
Beautiful inside leg kick by Mashapov. And again, trying to time the counter is Mashapov. Adams wise to it. He's just so fast with his head movement, his, his shoulder rolling, and his footwork. It's really difficult to get a read on him or even, even when you think you do, his ability to move the entirety of his body is so fast, he's just really difficult to touch. It's like a, a super frustrating game of tag. Yeah, it is, and there you go. Mashapov lands a good overhand right. Adams shoots in immediately, doesn't get the takedown, but does get the position, pinning Mashapov up against the cage. Mashapov's turn to show off his takedown defense. Adams had a pretty good position there, and I talked about it before the fights. You see really great takedowns out of Adams at times, and. Uh, Mashrapov able to fend it off. And that's a good takedown defense. Oh, Mashrapov gets the takedown with the single leg. Has Adams pinned, but Adams so good at getting back up. Basing on that hand, momentarily had his left leg back where he could put it underneath him to stand up. And Mashrapov made the mistake of burying his head there. He had his head down around the waist of Adams. That's allowing Adams to come back up. And uh, you hear Chael Sonnen talk about it all the time in his fight commentary. Whoever has their head in the higher position is going to win. And that's exactly what happened there as Adams was able to come up because Mashapov had his head low. Adams back in the dominant position with Mashapov pinned up against the cage. Very good ability to pop back up after that takedown. The takedown did land, so it'll score, but Adams scores immediately back by getting right back up and taking top or dominant position. And going back to work with those foot stomps is Adams. Those are so painful, JR. Both these like, guys digging shots to the body. Yeah, go home and drop a bowling ball on your foot. It's kind of kind of give you a sense of what that feels like. It doesn't sound like my idea of fun, that's for sure. Some really good transitions by both fighters, though. Getting out from the cage, back in. Based upon looks, I would have said Mashrapov with the strength advantage seems to be a little bit thicker fighter, whereas Adam's just slightly taller, long, lean build. But as they tie up, we see Adam's able to bully the position a little bit more than Mashrapov has been. And like I talked about at the end of round number one, Adams able to control position against the cage. And sometimes when technique is equal, that does just become a factor of strength. So Adams showing his strength here tonight. Yes, he is. And he's also showing his really good knowledge of leverage. As you can see, being the taller fighter, he's actually brought himself down. He's digging his forehead into the chin and neck. Oh, beautiful takedown, though, by Mashrapov. That was a hard takedown. Solid trying to take the back of Adams, but Adams gets back up. Adams back to his feet. Mashapov looking for the choke. Did not have control of the hips of Adams. Adams looking for some payback. He wants to plant Mashapov. Show the judges, hey, we're even in that department. But Mashapov with the uh, most highlight-esque moment of the fight so far. And just a few seconds left here. We're going to go to the round three in this title fight. Checking out the replay here. Mashrapov putting his hands to work early. Adams able to evade that spinning kick. And then uh, he'll show us some work up against the cage here. And when they're there, Adams seeming to have the strength advantage. And like you talked about, just using his height to his advantage and leveraging well. And it's been impressive. That was two takedowns that were landed by Mashrapov in that round. And both times, Adam able to, Adam's able to spring right back up, didn't phase him. And he still looks fresh, and so does Mashrapov. This round three could be very explosive. The feeling out process is definitely over. Such a classic takedown there by Mashrapov. Just set it up beautifully, kicked his leg through, able to get the hip swing, and just basically uh, helicopters his opponent over. And Adams does have to be worried. He controlled that round, but those types of loud slams are what sways judges' opinions sometimes. So he's got to be careful. I wouldn't leave this in the hand of the judges if I was Adams. 
Great sign of respect from these two fighters, great veterans. And let's see if either fighter elects to really try to pick up the pace here. It's been what I call a methodical fight so far. Both fighters with moments of explosiveness, but as a general rule, a very well-paced fight. Yeah, neither fighter has really opened up and you know turned this into a swinging match. They're both calculated. But I mean, that's what you get from having as much experience as these guys do. You don't freak out and you don't waste all of your gas in the early rounds. And Adams again showing that strength as he's able to turn Mosharpov against the cage. When they clinched, neither one had a decided advantage, but Adams able to put that strength on display. As two foot stomps in a row, I don't think Mosharpov is gonna be walking very well tomorrow. That foot is beat up. You can see how deep purple it is already. There's going to be some ice in, uh, in his immediate future, no doubt. So again, Adams controlling position, using the leverage. Good job with his head position. And finally, Mosharpov breaks free. But Adams just a great job of cage control this evening. Yeah, for Mosharpov, he's got to stay out and get some octagon control. He's been held up against the cage for the first two rounds. He can't let himself get sucked back into that. And for Adams, Adams needs to open his striking up again. He was landing really well earlier. Mosharpov, really good job with his balance up against the cage. Adams has tried multiple times for takedowns. Hasn't been able to have good effect on those. And like I said, I talked about it in the, the pre-fight introductions. Adams has great takedowns. So Mastropov with even better takedown defense. And that was a good job by Adams on that one. Good footwork. Mastropov tried to kind of swing out to the left again like he did a minute ago in the round. Uh, Adams tracked him back down. Keeps him up against the cage, not letting him get out again. And continued knee strikes, just beating up the legs and the body of Mashapov's is Adams. And foot stomps coming into play there. And as they're close to us here, we can see the swelling in the left foot of Mashapov. And Adams not willing to give up the clinch, wants to stay here tied up against the fence, work that dominant position keep the strikes going. And Adams has just landed two beautiful knees to the midsection of Mashrapov. That's going to just take its toll if he keeps letting that happen. Back out to the center of the octagon, though. Let's see if either of these guys can mount some striking offense while they're out there. Less than two minutes to go in this title fight. You can see Adams literally backing himself into the cage, making it look like he was retreating, but all the while knowing that Mashrapov was going to come in, immediately secures the tie-up, turns him back into the cage. That was a real good game plan by Adams. I think he's planned this whole time on keeping this fight here. Yeah, he really baited him into that position there. Good job by Adams. We talk about fight IQ, and he really showed that right there. Yeah, that's that chess match that we talk about, you know. Another good takedown defense, but big takedown by Mashrapov. Adams almost bounces right back up. Mashrapov, good job kicking out the leg. It's like a, like a table. If there's a couple of legs on the table, you kick one of them out. It's going to tip to the side, and that's exactly what's happened for Adams here. So. Yep, he secured that leg. Adams still... Very dangerous in this position. Still with that chance to get up. Mashrapov, if he wants to secure this, is going to need to get Adams away from the cage. And I just don't think he's going to have the strength to do it. Yeah, even if the rest of the fight plays out here, it's basically been, you know, four minutes of Adams controlling position and 45 seconds of Mashrapov controlling position on the ground. So. Yeah, and Adams immediately stands back up, gets the underhooks, and we're right back to where we started. This has just got to be demoralizing for Mashrapov. He can't do anything from this position. Adams' feet back, head in the right position, stabbing in with knee strikes. And there's the fight. We're going to take it to the judges. Let us know 
how they saw it for our main event of the evening here at Sparta Combat League 66. And, you know, I do think that Adams took that win, and I have to go back and, and think about what George St. Pierre used to say. This was a good game plan by Adams' part. I think this is what he wanted to do the whole time, keep it up against the cage like that. And George St. Pierre used to say, I don't care if it's a boring fight, I'm here to win, and I'm going to take advantage of whatever I can, and that's exactly what he did. Checking things out on the replay here, and you can show this at most portions of any round. And well, switch there. Uh, there's there's one of the takedowns by Masha Pop, but I was going to say most portions of any round, and that would be Adams controlling position up against the cage, able to get his knee striking and his foot stomp game into full effect. Waved to the crowd by Mashrapov. Our thanks to him for making the the long trip from Florida here to Colorado. And that is a long trip. You've also got to deal with the time change, which can't be easy either. Time change and the altitude. And Mashrapov never seemed to fade in this fight. We never saw him suck and win. We never talked about him slowing down. Everything seemed really on point for him as far as conditioning goes. And that's difficult for a fighter to come into the, the mile high here and be able to do that. No, it is. And that just goes to show these guys are both true professionals. They train hard. They train the right way. Neither of them killed themselves with the weight cut. And a lot of times that's what you see with, with, with these guys. They cut too much weight and they just can't perform the way they want to. Mashrapov looked good, never gassed out, but in the end, Adam's just too strong. And both these guys circling the cage, signaling, hey, uh, I think that belt is mine. Well, the judges are gonna have to make up their decision on that one. That's one of those counting things again, so it could take a little bit of time. Not gonna leave that up to you or I. Adams holding up the Old Glory Energy Drink. Our thanks to them for being one of our title sponsors here at Sparta Combat League. Go grab yourself some Old Glory. I'm sipping on one of them right now, and I have to say, it's definitely keeping me awake. And what's more American than Old Glory? I mean, <laughs> come on now. Seems like maybe they lost the calculator having to tally by hand. Hmm. Yeah, Abacus. Ring girls certainly ready to present the title. Somebody goes home with some new hardware. There it is. And I think another good time to remind everybody that AVM 9 Army versus Marines happens June 30th at the Pepsi Center. That is gonna be one heck of a show with an eight-man tournament that somebody's gotta win three fights in one night to take home a championship belt. That is gonna be some excitement. And there we go. Looks like the judges have tallied the cards, and here we go. They brought them all the way from Miami. Fans, be sure to stick around after the announcement of the winner as we have more raffle tickets to draw, more prizes to give away. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Martinez scores about 29-28 Adams. Judge Van Tine scores about 29-28 Mashrapov. And Judge Ramirez scores about 29-28, declaring a winner by split decision and new Sparta Combat League 178-pound champion, Anthony Sugarfoot Congratulations, Adams. Team Wildman fighter Anthony Adams goes home in the inaugural 178-pound division fight, takes home the hardware for Brent Bradley. I am J.R. Gordon. Thank you so much for having joined us here 
at Sparta Combat League 66. We're going to take it up to Sean Patrick. He'll give us the post-fight interview. Jonathan we'll see you at the Anthony. next I know you're not a guy that likes to leave it in the judges in the judges' hands, but you did that tonight. Do you think you did enough? Yeah, I think I did plenty, man. Besides all that, though, my whole life I've been through adversity. Uh, from the day I was born, I was born dead, but I'm still here kicking, and can't nothing stop me. Let's talk about that fight. I'll be honest with you, it looked like you got a little uncomfortable throughout most of it. Most of that fight was in the clinch. Was that a game plan? No, that wasn't the game plan at all. You know me, I like to stick and move and look fancy. Uh, this fight was supposed to be a five round fight. That's what I prepared for. I found out today, today that Joseph Mason changed it and made it a three round bout. So it just kinda, it messed with me mentally. I had to, I just had to get through it. I was forged in the fire and out came the wave, which is Sugarfoot. Well, you find a way to get a victory again. You find a way to stay undefeated again. I know you got big things on the horizon, but earlier tonight, I don't know if you heard, but you and your team were called out. You have anything to say about that? Um, you know, that was a year ago. I don't have nothing to say about that. Those guys could talk all they want, but look who has the crown. What's up next for you? I want to be a multiple division champion. So whoever's out there who wants to see me, can't nobody see me on the yard, cuz, and none of you can either. I know you got a list of people to thank. Tell me who you want to thank. First off, I want to thank Thomas Denny. This guy has the utmost belief in me. Professor Matt Sims, who opened the door for us. He's taught me so many things. My new man to the team, Chris Green. I wish I could have showed some of the things that uh, he taught me through this camp, but I wasn't able to. I mean, you never know how the fight's going to go. You just have to adapt, not anticipate, and just react. You got some more people to thank? Yeah, I do. Denver Chiropractic, they always keep me in line. Denver Sports Recovery, they help with all my recovery needs. Uh, old Glory again, I still see it says Sugar Free. It needs to say Sugar Foot. Y'all are acting up. Um, CBD Living Water, way to be hydrated. Uh, County Financial, Five Star Powder Coating. I love you, Vicky Alvarez and the whole Alvarez family. M MMA Express, they're the uh, new MMA gear in town, so you don't have to order your stuff and get it in the mail and it not, uh, not fit. You gotta send it back. Get at those guys. That's again, MMA Express. Uh, I already said Chris Green, Matt Sims, my T-Dub family, Zinganos, my beautiful girlfriend and her family, and everyone else who came out, man. I love you guys. If it wasn't for you all, I wouldn't have a job. I also like to thank Sparta Combat League for, uh, for everything, man. Happy birthday, Brad, and happy birthday, Dylan Snyder. Hey. And, and I love you guys. Uh, my sisters are in the house. My dad's in the house. I love you guys, too. My biggest fans. I see you, baby. Heather. Congratulations once again. Finding Thanks, a way Sean. to get it done. You're a 178-pound champion now as well. Anthony Sugarfoot Adams.